I'm Tim Ventura from AmericanAntiGravity.com, and I'm speaking today with Robert Cook, Jr. about inertial propulsion. Robert, I'd like to thank you for joining us, and I'd like to start out by asking what exactly you're working on. Okay, thank you for having me. Um, I have uh, been working on inertial propulsion engines since I was a kid, and uh, lately, uh, since joining up with my father with uh, his uh, CIP engine, uh, you know, the Cook inertial propulsion engine that he invented, um, I've since uh, advanced that knowledge uh, into a new version of it uh, called the C-Force Drive and also another um, engine that's uh, not related in, to that principle but is also an inertial propulsion engine called the uh, SID engine. So I actually have uh, two different um, versions of an inertial propulsion that are, uh, you know, have advanced since uh, what my father invented. Yeah, I'm actually on the CID engine project page now. It's at cforce.cc, and it looks like you've got the death of rocketry download now, and there's some donation buttons and just some general information about the device itself as well as a picture of you with it. Uh, could you tell me a little bit more about that one? Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, I usually call it the SID engine. Um, it stands for the Cook Inertial Drive, and... Um, I, I can't get into a lot of detail as far as how it works because I'm uh, trying to get the patent together. But uh, the way that it works is, uh, in general, is that you know there are weights that are spinning within uh, what I call the uh, spool, and uh, it produces an unbalanced uh, force which pulls it in, you know, the forward direction. And uh, it's a directional. It, it, it can be direct uh, directed in any particular uh, uh, way that you want, um, depending on the way that it spins, it'll, fit, it'll either spin wonder, you know, it'll either move forward or backwards, and of course you can point it around and, you know, get any kind of mo uh, motion that you need, but uh, it's, uh, it's, very, uh, it, it, it's very different from, uh, you know, some, uh, a lot of the other inertial propulsion systems that I've seen out there, uh, but... Uh, I can't get into a whole lot of detail just yet because uh, we got to get the patents together before yeah. um, I can divulge that. That makes total sense. And I don't want you to give out anything that might potentially damage that patent process because I think that's so critical yeah. to moving things forward. Well, so there's the CID engine, and then there is another version as well, right, that you mentioned earlier. Could you tell me a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah, that, um, that one is uh, what I call the uh, Cook Force Drive or uh, C Force Drive. And um, that, uh, that was actually the first inertial propulsion engine that I invented uh, after I started to, to uh, take over this particular project from my father. And uh, it's actually based on the uh, same principle as the uh, CIP engine, um, you know, where uh, you have uh, a weight that is uh, exchanged you know, so that there's more mass on one side of the, uh, uh, of the spin than the other. Um, but it's uh, it's being accomplished in a completely different manner than the uh, uh, CIP engine that my father invented, and uh, you know that the the nice thing about this newer um, m method of doing this is that it can achieve a lot higher speeds than the uh, you know than the CIP engine could because that was always the issue was the uh, you know how many exchanges we could get um, you know per minute uh, with the other machine it was very complex and you know being able to pick up and drop off a weight, um, you know, is, is, it, it's hard to do the faster you go. And, you know, the C-Force Drive uh, allows us to, you know, the, the model that I'm working on right now, uh, you know, we'll be able to do about uh, a thousand exchanges a minute and uh, produce, you know, several hundred pounds of force when it's finished. So it'll, it'll be completely, uh, you know, uh, several orders of magnitude more powerful than any of the other ones that we've done so far. Now, before we go further, I should mention, and I want to convey my condolences, your father, because you're continuing his work, he passed on a couple of years back. And so the work that you're doing now is really continuing his legacy. Yes, yeah. I, uh, he, his, his health was deteriorating, uh, you know, about mid, you know, in the mid-2000s. And when I started to realize that, um, I, me and him started to collaborate on his work, and uh, he passed away in 2008. Uh, you know, and, and by then, thankfully, you know, we, you know, we, we'd got, we'd gotten far enough on what we were working on that, uh, you know, the, the, the work that he did was not lost. And I, uh, you know, I, I pretty much inherited the, the knowledge that, uh, you know, that he 
gained over the 40 years of his research. So, um, you know, it didn't, it didn't come to an end when he passed away. Now, did you inherit, because I, when I was looking online, it looks like the Forceborn website is also online still at a forceborn.com. That's the, the classic homepage of Cook and Nurse Propulsion, right? Yeah, and, and honestly, I was a little surprised to see that uh, was up because it, it had been taken down a couple of years back, and um, I think back in February, uh, the gentleman who was uh, uh, helping us host that uh, had put that website back up, and I'm not in contact with him, so I'm not exactly sure, you know, why he uh, put that up or not, but it's it's interesting for historical reasons, if nothing else. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a tragedy, the, the loss of your father, because he had done so much work, and he was such a kind man, and so I, I wondered, you know, maybe it's back up just as a tribute to the work that he did. I, I would I would like to think so, because, uh, you know, my father had very good motives, uh, motivation for doing this, because he was, he was very concerned about the environment, um, you know, he really wanted to fix up the world, and, you know, this this type of propulsion is, uh, you know, pollution-free, and, um, you know, it eventually could be developed for uh, free energy uses and stuff like that, and, you know, that was entirely his motivation, you know, he, the, any, anything else was, was secondary to him. Well, in terms of these engines, you told me off-air that you've been involved with this since you were a child, so this is something that you grew up uh, I mean, you have years of exposure to this and probably a better intuitive understanding of this than, than most people out there. Yeah, and I mean, uh, my very first, uh, or some of my very first memories are of the uh, the first model of the CIP engine my father made. Um, I was probably about three years old, and I remember the uh, them putting it on a boat uh, in, this, uh, in, a, in a pool in the backyard of one of our friends' house. And they turned it on, and my mother was in the water holding onto the boat, and the uh, CIP engine actually pulled the boat along with my mother holding onto it, and it almost crashed into the other side of the pool. And, um, you know, I've, I've witnessed all of the major uh, advancements that my father did, and, you know, uh, in fact, I even made one of these, uh, one of his, um, what we used to call the Coriolis machine, which is the first uh, inertial propulsion engine that he invented. I made one of those for a science project, and it's it, it definitely you know when you've grown up into this kind of stuff and you've you know had hands-on experience and and your you know your father's you know somebody who who can you know talk with theoretical nuclear physicists about this kind of stuff and he teaches you what you know. It it, it kind of I guess it kind of rubs off. Yeah. One of the things that's really interesting to me about the work that yourself and, and your father before you had done is it goes to this idea of off-center rotators. And for a long time, physics had said that, that there was no way that these things could work. And Dr. James Woodward started really working on the theory and Mox principle a few years back. And he had some initial results that really changed my mind. It led me to think that, you know, there's something here. This is a technology that could truly transform propulsion as we know it. I did follow up recently with some of his colleagues, and they've said, yes, he is getting some very good results with his work, and it does validate this idea of inertial propulsion having merit to it. And even just that, I think, gives it this push to where, you know, your work has an area that it can fit into. And I think that's really exciting because we, we can see this path forward for it. Yeah, I, I really think that, uh, you know, minds are starting to open up to this uh, type of propulsion even in, you know, mainstream science. Uh, you know, it, it, that was, that's been one of the struggles my father had. And I'm finding that uh, there's a whole lot, there's a lot less skepticism nowadays, you know, because, you know, people like Woodward and, and, and others have been, uh, you know, seriously looking into this and starting to get some sort of results that, uh, you know, people can actually see. Yeah. Well, so would it be pretty accurate to say that the C-Force engine then is kind of an extension of the original work that your father did? And then the SID engine is actually your own creation that, that's just based on your experience and knowledge. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, it's interesting because um, I came up with the SID engine um, when I was, uh, uh, you know, trying to figure out ways of uh, raising more funds for the C Force drive because I'm about ninety percent finished with that particular machine, and um, I started thinking and doing some experiments and things like that, and then suddenly I came up with a uh, completely different uh, method of, uh, you know, inertial propulsion, and it's uh, it's basically the the fourth uh, method. Um, you know that uh, that I know of personally that that works 
um, you know, along with the uh, the Coriolis engine or Cook Coriolis engine, as I call it, you know, CIP engine and the C Force drive. So there's there's actually a lot of ways of making this work, um, you know, which, which is is kind of surprising because it's it's a it's a very narrow trail to uh, you know to to you know to to use these uh, as you call it, the mock principle type um, uh, you know propulsion systems because there's a lot of forces involved. But uh, yeah, the SID engine is is, uh, is is my own creation, and and the Sea Force uh, uh, drive is is something that is based on the CIP principle of uh, exchanging masses so that there's more mass on one side than the other. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it's interesting how much support there is for this idea, and it's all very recent. Uh, I, I did an interview with Gennady Shipov, a very well-known Russian physicist, uh, not too long yeah. ago. And Shipov also supported this idea with his work. Now, he, he had a very complex theory, and when I was able to actually see the device, we have a brief video of that on American Anti-Gravity, uh, it's an off-center rotator. And so, again, very exciting because it, it looks like there's just all sorts of support coming out of the woodwork for this. Well, now, one thing I should ask is, I think one of the classical challenges with this type of machine is that they tend to shake themselves to pieces. Have you been able to overcome that? Uh, yes, actually, um, and and you're right. They uh, uh, when when I first built the um, uh, the the Cook Coriolis engine for my science project, um, the kind of forces that these things generate are enough to you know it basically you know shakes itself apart or, or hammers itself apart. And you know for many years I was trying to figure out a way to um, either strengthen the machine or you know uh, reduce that uh, you know very violent force that's uh, you know that that's being generated and and actually that's uh, eventually those those thoughts along with some other experiments are what you know uh, allowed me to come up with the sit engine and um, you know it, it's uh, you know as far as you know the the vibrations and things like that it's it's a lot less um, you know the only problem I've had uh, you know has, has just been there's a particular part in it that I need to it's very complex machining and um, you know, there's uh, you know to get it right, it'll reduce some of the hammering and such that it, that's involved in the machine, so it'll be nice, smooth, you know, nice and smooth and quiet. But uh, you know, as far as it shaking itself apart, it's it's pretty. Uh, we've, we've pretty much mastered that issue at this point, thankfully, because otherwise, uh, you know, it really limits the, the practicality of the machine if you have to constantly uh, overhaul it. Yeah, I think that's one of the challenges with this kind of work because you're working with these mechanical systems. You'd mentioned the machining, and not only is that challenging, but it's also rather expensive too, right? Because you need a pretty good shot. It, it can get that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thankfully, I have a good machinist who's, uh, you know, he's he's giving me some pretty decent rates. It's just, you know, I'm kind of his last priority for that reason. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are moving forward slowly but surely. Well, now, in terms of thrust, what kind of thrust are you currently generating with these? Um, the uh, most recent uh, model of the SID engine, um, SID-3, uh, I've been able to generate probably about 25 to 30 pounds of uh, thrust at about 500 RPM. But uh, the, only, the thing about that is that that's only with uh, a third of the uh, total mass that the, the machine is going to be able to handle. Yeah, I've been kind of very steadily graduating it up. So, um, you know, if, once it's finally uh, finished, uh, it should be able to spin at about uh, uh, over 3,000 RPM, you know, and, and throw around about 50 pounds of, of mass. And, you know, at that kind of speed, uh, I'm expecting to see several hundred pounds of force being generated. So it should be something that's, it, it's, it's not something, you know, small that can only be measured with special equipment. It's, uh, my plan is to uh, be able to show a, a practical demonstration of this, uh, propulsion system being used, like for example, the uh, you know in in a in a system like what I saw when I was a kid, where they had it in the boat and it moved the boat. I, I want to be able to do something you know similar so that people can see that this is a practical um, method of transportation. Yeah, I, yeah, I I would love to see that with your father's engine because I saw a video of the Thornson engine that was actually in a canoe and it was doing exactly the same thing. And to me, yeah. it's just intriguing to see it moving the boat. But for, from what you've said, uh, it was taking the boat and your mother with it, holding onto it. And it sounds like it was more thrust than Thornson had. Yeah, well, in fact, with that uh, that first model of the CIP engine that my father made, um, you know, we're talking about a machine uh, that uh, was only spinning at about 20 RPM. And it was still able to generate uh, 
enough force to uh, pull this this uh, boat and my mom across, you know, the pool. You know, it, it was just probably doing about a you know mile or two an hour. You know, which is, you know, obviously at 20 RPM, you know, the sky's the limit. You can spin it faster and it will move faster. So you know, that's that's kind of what what I'm looking at is uh, you know something that's not a not a subtle effect. It's going to be something very obvious. Yeah. Well, so you're currently generating around 20 to 30 pounds of force with this. And is that the C-force or is that the SID engine? That's the SID engine. Um, I haven't gotten the uh, C-force drive, uh, you know, propelling very fast at the moment because I haven't, uh, you know, finished it yet. But uh, that particular one has been able to generate, uh, you know, probably about five or six pounds of, of force, you know, with the, the couple exchanges I've gotten out of it so far. Um, but that one, you know, eventually will, you know, at, at the higher speed that I have uh, planned for it, um, we'll be able to generate probably about, I would, I would say about two to 300 pounds of force. That's a lot. That's definitely something that you could demonstrate. And, you know, one of the challenges with some of James Woodward's stuff is because they're working with piezo crystals and it's so small, there's always the issue of, is this true propulsion or are we buried so deep in the noise that we're just not sure? And with yours, I don't think there's going to be any question about it. Yeah, well, it, I think that's really what what we need to do is is have uh, you know have something that that the average person can see actually works. You know, I, I think the public demonstration of this kind of technology is is really key. You know, get it out of the laboratory or get it out of the garage and you know out into the world. Basically, is what needs to happen. Yeah. Well, can, can you tell me what kind of materials you're using for this? I mean, is it mostly just steel, or are you using carbon fiber and some of the other uh, you know newer technologies? I, I've, I've gone pretty old school with this. Um, you know, it's primarily aluminum for the, you know, the frame and stuff. And then the, the weights, I've been, you know, uh, using steel. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to probably be adding some lead, uh, you know, to get some more mass out of it with the, uh, the SID engine. Um, but, uh, you know, it's nothing really exotic. I think, um, you know, when I decide to get a little more ambitious and do a uh, flying-type prototype, I may look into uh, composites for the frame, you know, to make it as light as possible so that, you know, the only really heavy stuff is going to be, you know, your uh, propellant masses. But, uh, you know, these, these machines, it's, it's just real old-school machining, you know, with old-school common materials. It's, it's kept my costs down quite a bit because, you know, I'm, I'm basically doing this uh, pr- primarily on my own budget at the moment. Yeah, you know, and with machines like this, I think it's always good to be able to prototype it with things that are common and, you're, you know, you're able to find locally and replace if necessary, especially with devices like this, because things tend to break and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, and, and, and things need to be modified as, as you begin to understand how, you know, how better to do things, uh, you know, through experience. Uh, experience. So, yeah, I, I, I've gone that particular route, and it, and it works, you know, it's you know, someday the, these things will be, you know, made, you know, probably mass produced in, you know, 3D printers and things like that. But uh, that's down the road after we've, uh, you know, perfected the uh, mechanics of it. Now, for a flying vehicle, are you looking at something that would be maybe the equivalent, I guess, of kind of an anti-gravity device where it would literally just lift itself up by its bootstraps? Or would it be more along the lines of powering an aircraft where it would still be moving it forward, but you'd have wings to carry some of the weight? Um, ultimately, I'd like to be able to, to levitate it directly off the ground. I, I believe that uh, you know, the C-Force drive and the SID engine do have that possibility because of, of the way that they work. Uh, you could also, of course, use it as a, as a, uh, a forward you know, propulsion uh, system you know, where you know, it, it lifts it off with the wings, you know, just like a, a normal engine as well. But I think uh, you know, this, uh, you know, the ultimate demonstration to show that this uh, you know, if, if this, if, if inertial propulsion is possible and, um, you know, it's actually, you know, producing a unidirectional force, uh, it shouldn't require wings to uh, be able to lift it off. And, and really, that's what I really want to see someday. And, and I really intend to do that someday soon, you know, probably within the next couple of years. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, I, I really do believe that this uh, has the potential of being able to lift it up off, uh, you know, as, you know, by its bootstrap, so to speak, um, you know, because uh, I, I do believe that there is a unidirectional force being produced by, um, you know, these, uh, these weights being spun the way that they are. Well, if I remember right, your father had a video where it was actually going up a slope, kind yeah. of part of the way there. So it was, it, it was uh, if I remember right, he had a beam or kind of a ramp, and the device was powering itself up the ramp. Yes, uh, and we've also done experiments on uh, air bearings uh, where it's being lifted up on a cushion of air 
And uh, we actually had a model, uh, the second CIP engine uh, was so, it was designed by engineers uh, who weren't really listening to what he had to say about how to design it. And it was, it couldn't spin very fast and it produced such a weak force, it couldn't roll on wheels. But when you, we put it on air cushion, that was the only way it could move. And to me, you know, a true uh, uh, reactionless drive should be able to work better with no friction. And that's what these particular machines have been able to demonstrate. So. Um, the only thing we we haven't done yet, uh, you know, is, is have it go up vertical. But uh, you know, going up inclines and um, you know on ice, on air bearings, uh, even uh, my father did something on uh, what's called a Cavendish torsion pendulum. Um, you know, where it's basically spinning around the center of a uh, you, know, you have a counterweight on one side, the machine on the other, and you know he turned it on and it was able to deflect around the center, which um, you know if it wasn't producing a real force, um, you know, it wouldn't have done anything. So it's, uh, you know, it, 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 it really is producing a, a force in one direction, and uh, we just need to get it spinning fast enough so that it'll be able to uh, overcome its own weight. Mm, interesting. The ship off video makes a lot more sense, because I think in their case, they had a, a lubricant on the surface that let it move around a lot more, too. Yeah. Now, you, you have videos up uh, online, right? There, there's a media link here on cforce.cc. Yeah, if if you go on the website, there's the um, uh, 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 watch uh, link, um, and that basically shows the uh, uh, the different videos. I have a a playlist of videos of the uh, early experiments I've done on the uh, the SID engine, and there's also some more on on YouTube as well, including uh, you know some of those uh, uh, CIP engine uh, videos uh, where it's going up up the incline. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, I made it to the video. Uh, there's a link at the bottom, and it said, Seeing is Believing, and then that took me right yeah. to the video. And I've seen that one on YouTube as well, and it's it, it worth watching because you can actually see it moving. And in that case, it looks like there's something underneath it. Is, is that the air bearing that you were talking about? Um, no, actually, these ones, uh, my, my air bearings, and uh, all, all of that stuff's in storage at the moment out in California, so I've, I've just been only able to use uh, wheels on this particular machine, but uh, I do want to uh, test on air bearings and, and see it float across the surface, um, you know, but it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's really interesting with the, uh, SID engine, the, the first video, uh, uh, you know, uh, that I have is of the SID 2, uh, model, and, uh, the first time I turned that thing on, um, you know, it started to move, and it, in fact, it moved strong enough that it unplugged itself from its, uh, uh, battery power source, and, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a force that's strong enough that you can feel it pushing up against your hand, even on that smaller model. And uh, you know, the bigger one is uh, I I don't have video of this posted publicly yet, but I've actually gotten it spinning up to about the fifteen hundred RPM already, and it it really pulls at you. Um, you know, so it's I'm looking forward to being able to show some uh, video of that uh, where it doesn't show the you know, exactly how it's working, but shows you what it's, you know, what it can do at those speeds, um, you know, hopefully pretty soon, as soon as my machine is just finished with the last parts. Oh, okay. So that's something that's going to be in the works pretty soon then. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's gotten all my parts finished except for that last uh, complex uh, bit of machining that I need, and um, I'm really hoping he'll get that done sometime, you know, before the end of the year. But, you know, if not, you know, it, it'll be sometime early next year that I'll get it back online. Because the problem was, is when I had it spinning at the 1500 RPM, we had a major bearing failure, and it destroyed several parts of the machine at that speed. You know, it, it basically milled them down. But uh, you know, we're we're rebuilding it, so it's going to be a lot stronger. You know, the, you know that particular failure isn't going to be able to happen very easily, and uh, it'll allow us for the much higher speeds and much more impressive uh, demonstrations than than what we already have. Well, I look forward to seeing that. And we're almost out of time for today, but let me send people again to your website at cforce.cc, and they'll be able to go there and learn more about the SID Engine project and watch videos as well. And when you have the new work completed, I look forward to watching the videos of it. I think this is incredibly exciting stuff. Oh, yeah. It's going to only get better as time goes on. And uh, basically what we're doing at the moment is, um, you know, we've, uh, you know, republished The Death of Rocketry, which is uh, the book that uh, talks about what the, uh, uh, you know, the history of what my father did and also what I've been doing. And, um, you know, we're looking to 
you know, help to, to raise funds to continue the project through, you know, selling the book and, and other, you know, basically crowdfunding uh, in the project, like, uh, you know, like what they're doing on Kickstarter and stuff like that. So yeah. um, definitely that's, that's what we're looking at right now. Well, and it looks like The Death of Rocketry, and again, that's available on your site, and it looks like you have an audio, an e-book, uh, and, and then the actual print publication of it. Uh, as well as some other crowdsourcing stuff. So, again, I would definitely recommend that people visit cforce.cc and learn a little bit more about your research and the legacy of research that you're continuing. Yes. I appreciate it, Tim. Thank you very much for having me.